Hi, welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. My name is Vince Leo. I am the film critic for the website Quipster.net. I invite you to check out that website for over 3,800 written reviews stemming all the way back to 1996 when I started the site so long ago. Quipster.net. Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net. Today I'm going to be looking at a film that is currently out in a limited release here in the United States. It also played at a variety of different film festivals as well. It's called Remember. It's a film by Adam McGoyan. He was the director, at least. It's a thriller with a lot of dramatic elements to it, rated R because of a sequence of violence and because of its language. It runs an hour and 34 minutes, and the main star is Christopher Plummer. It does feature Martin Landau, Henry Cerny, Dean Norris, Jurgen Prochnow, Peter DeCuna, and Bruno Gantz in supporting roles. The screenplay is by Benjamin August. In the film, Christopher Plummer stars as a 90-year-old recent widower named Zev Gutmann. He's of German origin, and he embarks on a road trip to try to find and ultimately try to kill the culprit for many deaths in Auschwitz during World War II. Gutmann, whose severe dementia erases every short-term memory by the time he wakes up from sleeping, he's escaped from his assisted care facility in New York with some cash and a detailed letter from a fellow survivor in the facility, a man named Max Rosenbaum, who's played by Martin Landau. Rosenbaum's letter informs Zev whenever he wakes up on who he is, and it contains patient and memory-refreshing instructions on how to find the man who killed their families. With a tip that this Nazi bloc commander had escaped somewhere in North America shortly following World War II, under the assumed name of Rudy Kurlander, Zev sets about going to each of the four men who fit the description until he finds the right one. And then he's going to end his life with a bullet from his store-bought Glock. So unfortunately, Adam McGoyan continues his career slide, turning issues films into gimmicky revenge thrillers. Remember takes an Auschwitz survivor's quest for revenge and tries to be a subversive genre excursion unworthy of that heavy topic. Goyan's previous film, called The Captive, did the same for child abduction and pornography, ostensibly about an important topic, but Goyan ended up mining the controversy for titillation factor more so than as an important theme to shed much needed light upon. Both films, The Captive and Remember, are about as weighty as one can get in terms of subject matter. I mean, we have horrific genocide as the backdrop to remember and the sexual exploitation of innocent children in The Captive, but then both of them end up playing out with the kind of plot developments that are rare to find outside of cheap and silly B-movie thrillers. Unlike most of his prior works, this time Egoyan is working from a script that's not his own. The screenplay credit here goes to Benjamin August. This is the first time he's had a screenplay produced. August's prior claim to fame came from working as a casting director for the reality TV show Fear Factor over a decade prior and not much in between. Perhaps this screenplay, which seems to crib quite a bit from... Christopher Nolan's Memento is just as old in terms of when it was written, but despite that, I do admit that there is an inherent watchability to the main hook. It at least brings a modicum of suspense in seeing how it will ultimately play out, even if it is repeatedly done through most of the scenes in the most clunky of ways during each stop in his journey. This is a Hitchcockian plot, and I love Hitchcock, so this should be right up my alley, but unlike the so-called master of suspense, Egoyan thinks that it's the plot mechanics that will make for a nail-biting tension. He fails to put much effort into using music or lighting or editing or camera movement to capture us in the moment in order to make us forget about the implausibility of it all. Remember, as a film, is so slack in its pacing that we're practically forced to mull over how ridiculous the scenes are involving such things as Zev purchasing a powerful firearm and the ease by which he can smuggle it across national borders. Just as with his main protagonist, Adam McGoyan seems to have a hard time trying to remember how to properly tell a story. He so ably was able to do that in his early work from the 1990s with such films as The Sweet Hereafter and Exotica and Felicia's Journey. His handling and framing of his actors nowadays comes across as awkward and wooden much of the time, and his plot developments aren't so much nudged as they are forced into submission with a stern twist of the arm. It makes the entirety of the film's tone feel anxious and pushy. 
Uh, there's one ludicrous scene in Idaho. Zev is greeted on the porch uh, by the police officer's son of one of his potential marks. The police officer ends up letting this complete stranger into his home. He reveals far too much about himself and his father in the conversation. He begins to show Zev his father's super cool collection of Nazi memorabilia. He doesn't even so much as vet Goodman before showing him the series of disturbing artifacts that even an Aryan loving skinhead would think twice about showing to a person that they knew to be a racist. That scene alone is enough to sink most films, but there's also a collection of other scenes, including two aggressively obnoxious scenes involving Zev interacting with young children. Watching these scenes painfully play out makes one wonder how long it's actually been since Egoyan has observed how real kids behave. Remember, is outdated as a psychological thriller, and it's fairly tacky as a piece of entertainment overall. It not only uses the background of the Holocaust as a platform for dubiously provocative entertainment, but it also exploits a degenerative disease like Alzheimer's and dementia merely as a means to manipulative exploitation in its plot. The performances by Christopher Plummer and Martin Landau are adequate if they are somewhat mechanical here, but their characters are merely vessels in service of this contrived plot that's unworthy of any kind of deep contemplation that you would suspect from the subject matter behind it. You know, if this were an examination into the relationship of the history of the Christopher Plummer and Martin Landau characters and their current mindset, you know, that really could have made for a riveting character study. But clearly, Adam Agoyan is spending far too much time trying to pull the rug out from under audiences in a way that M. Night Shyamalan would, that he fails to see the humanity of these characters' struggles as more compelling than the aha moments that he has in store for the film's ending. With the exception of Christopher Plummer, who shows here that he's still quite the thespian that's worth building a film around, the rest of this faux, weighty, subpar film makes Remember, unfortunately, one that many audiences will likely choose to forget. I'm giving Remember two stars out of four, and two stars out of four on my scale means that it is unfortunately lacking something vital that makes it a worthwhile film to go out of your way to see. And that thing that it's missing is in trying to determine whether it's going to be a full-bore gimmicky thriller, maybe even a Hitchcockian homage, or if it's going to be a weighty drama. I think that here... Adam McGoyan seems to want to make an important film, but he's so caught up in the gimmickry of the screenplay, he's neither able to make it an effective drama, nor is he able to make it a riveting thriller either, so it's caught in a very stagnant mode, and unfortunately, Egoyan, who was considered an auteur back in the 1990s, has further devolved into irrelevancy for today's cineasts. A return to form is just not going to happen here. So, nevertheless, if you like my reviews generally, I do encourage you to click the subscribe button and you'll continue to get all of them downloaded to your podcast player throughout the year. And also, if you happen to be a long-term listener and you do want to support the show, I do encourage you to go leave a review on iTunes and let other people know that this is a show that's worth checking out if they're interested in some of the latest in film reviews. The Quipster Film Review Podcast is the name of the show. Until next time, thanks for listening, and please, whenever you go to the movies, I hope that you have a really great time. Thank you.